Hello and welcome to another episode of the Green Dream video series. I'm ESG Clarity's Global Deputy Editor Natasha Turner and today it's great to be joined by Sarah Haynes, a Social Impact Fund Manager at Resonance. So thanks so much for joining us today, Sarah. Great to join you as well, Natasha. So do you think that the appetite that we saw for social impact investing or just the S of ESG in general during the pandemic for obvious reasons, is kind of starting to wane now? Are people moving on to other priorities? Some of the numbers seem to suggest that. It's kind of, it's an interesting question when you've posed that to me. Um, I'm actually a fund manager for the Women in Safe Homes Fund here at Resonance. From this particular fund's perspective, uh, we haven't seen that interest wane. And we've definitely not seen social need reduce as a result of the pandemic, but rather increase. And so for that fund, um, and actually for residents in general, have you made any changes uh, since the Adebowale Commission report came out, which, which was really looking at um, social impact in, ge in general, investing in general and um, sort of as a sector? Yeah, no, that, that report, I think we would welcome some of the findings of that report in the sense of it highlights the need for a greater size of social investment to go towards social enterprises. So here at Resonance, we are all about social impact and social impact investing in general. And we have a, a property funds team where we actually have seven property funds um, of which the Women in Safe Homes Fund, which I manage, is one of those. Um, but actually outside of our property funds team, we have a number of other teams as well. And that includes our impact labs. And in our impact labs, we have teams such as enterprise growth, where we're looking at direct enterprise centric investment. And we take things around EDI um, very seriously in, in that. Um, and we're always looking for opportunities for further investment, further um, sort of ideas within that space. We're trying to encourage those who, investors who might traditionally invest in what we would call more traditional forms of real estate to think about investing in a property fund which has social impact at its core. Um, and then similarly, those social investors um, who perhaps are more familiar with sort of the impact investing space to really consider sort of more of a diversity lens to their investments. Um, so, you know, as I say, this is the UK's first property fund uh, which has a gender lens. So this is quite actually quite unique and pioneering in itself uh, for mm -hmm. a property fund and I think in a sense there is a an intersection with that report because that, that report highlighted the need for a greater focus on diversity um, and so that's an element that we're trying to constantly embed in terms of the gender lens of this fund and taking a gender lens approach at all levels of the fund as well. Uh, but yeah, in terms of the sort of the investor base, I mean, we have a number of investors in this fund who've actually never even done social impact investing before um, and that for us is actually an incredible piece of social impact because there's a, a real need in this space in general, regardless of whether it's property funds or enterprise centric funds to attract an increasingly broader range of investors. And um, so we're, we're encouraged to see that. And I think it's quite important as well, like when I mentioned about, you know, encouraging, say, traditional real estate investors to invest in social impact funds is to really kind of take them on that journey as well, because, you know, depending on their experience of investing in, in say, a, a property fund such as this, it doesn't mean they're not going to then invest in further types of social impact funds as well. Can you give an example of um, just a really meaningful impact that you felt that the fund has had? There's a particular story that's mentioned in our social impact report, which is about a lady called Salima. Um, and Salima, we, we obviously have to change the names. Um, Salima actually experienced severe psychological, uh, sexual and physical abuse in an intimate, basically intimate partner violence. And she had to flee. She was isolated from her family um, and she had to go to the local housing office to try and find some housing. Who put her forward to a specialist organization familiar with this. Um, that organization had houses uh, from this particular fund. And her support worker is quoted in our social impact report saying that when Salima first entered that house, she broke down into tears. That support worker thought it was because of all the trauma and the abuse that she had experienced, but it was actually because she had entered finally a safe place where she could be, where she could recover and move forward with her life. And that's the, that's the purpose of this fund really, is that housing, is a fundamental basis 
to vulnerable people being able to move on with their lives in other aspects. Um, and so, you know, I think it's really, really important to emphasize that, you know, there's such a need for housing and the numbers of people needing housing, and in, in this case, women and their children, is, is scarily high in this country. Mm -hmm, definitely, that's a really powerful story. And, and I think just so important when you can see the connections between, you know, the things you read in the news or people's stories like that and the impact you can have even in an industry like this, that's, that's what it's all about, right? Yeah, it is, yeah. And, you know, we, we work really closely with our housing partners. Um, and, you know, when we're looking at houses to buy through the fund, we won't buy one which they wouldn't want to take on. And we take into strong consideration their preferences and the needs. So, you know, for example, it might be no communal entrance ways because those women have experienced severe abuse. It, it might be something about the type of locks we even use on the property. And we're very focused on delivering high quality accommodation as well. So it's not just housing. It's actually best practice in terms of the quality of accommodation provided to those partners and, and ultimately the women who are housed. Well, just to end on a sort of uh, upbeat note, um, we always end the, the Green Dream video series on a kind of fun question, which is what is your favorite sustainable drink or snack? I'll have to tell you, it's, it's minty from the plant pot outside my patio doors. So very few uh, food miles, let's say, um, and mm. that for me is probably one of my most sustainable drinks. Similarly, we have a family garden where we grow courgettes, so I've been happily picking away at the weekend uh, with our own homegrown organic uh, courgettes as well. Great, lovely. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. That's really great. That's great. Thanks for having me.